What did you say? I didn't say anything. Oh, I thought you said something. No. Oh. What did you say? I didn't say anything. No, I thought you said something. No? No. You know, Watson, the, the interesting thing about the queen bee is that she seldom leaves the hive and is generally followed and protected by the other bees. Just arrived, the messenger said it was for you. What is it? Well, it's uh, obvious, isn't it? Yes. Holmes, you never told me. Don't you what? what? I hadn't got one. Or I hadn't until now. Well, where did this come from? I don't know. I was in there. Well, what do we do now? Well, you're the doctor. Don't you know? I'm not that kind of a doctor. Oh, I see. Well, uh, shall we examine the matter a little more closely? Can you, um, pick it up? Do you mean, am I strong enough? No, no, no. I mean, uh, do you know how? There's, there's, there's a sort of special way of handling these things, isn't there? Nothing special about it at all. You just pick it up. Or just uh, pick it up, eh? Oh, well, I'll try. <laughs> well, Watson, there's nothing to it at all. I told you. <laughs> You're a good-looking chap, isn't you? <laughs> Sing it a lullaby. What? Lullaby. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. Britons never, never, never will be slaves. Uh, doesn't like that. He's crying. I can hear him. Yeah. So what do we do now? Perhaps he's hungry. Yes, of course, the poor fellow, he's hungry. Well, uh, make him a cup of tea, Watson. Babies don't drink tea, they drink milk. Oh, do they? Oh, well, then make him some milk. Perhaps that's for mother. <coughs> Not for mother. What's that? It's a baby. Well, so it is. Is it yours? Certainly not. Well, he's crying. Oh, really? Now, we've been able to deduce that without the aid of Scotland Yard. Oh, you know, you're stopping crying. Oh, yes. <laughs> the little mother. All right, you hold it. Wow. 
I stopped. So he had, he had stopped. But he likes you. Well, I'll be darned. Oh, no, please, Lestrade. No profanity in front of the child. Who does it belong to? It came in a basket. Babies don't come in baskets, Holmes. They've got to belong to someone. Well, maybe there's a note. There is. It's addressed to you. Dear Mr. Holmes, please keep Tony for me. I will contact you as soon as I can. Signed, Madame Henri Durand. Madame Durand? Mean anything to you, Lestrade? Well, yes, that's why I'm here. I wanted to talk to you about him. You mean her? No, I mean him. Him? No, not him. His father, Dr. Henri Durand. Dr. Henri Durand? Oh, yes, yes. You mean the young French inventor? Yes, that's right. This must be his son. Dr. Durand was kidnapped yesterday morning, just as he was leaving the Admiralty. I didn't read anything about that in the papers. No, it's been a very well-guarded secret. Hardly anybody knew Dr. Durand was in this country. Well, then it might be safe to assume for the moment that Madame Durand learned the whereabouts of her husband, went after him, and fearing for the child, sent him here in our safe Mm-hmm. Have you any need at all as to who could possibly have kidnapped Dr. Durand? Well, at the moment, none at all. Where are they staying, Mr. Strain? At a mansion that the Admiralty loaned them, just off Berkeley Square. Well, then I think that should be our first call. Let's go. No, no, no. Someone has to mind the baby, Watson. Mind the baby? Yes. Me? Who else? Well, I, I don't know. Couldn't we find a nursemaid? Do you know any nursemaid? Well, I haven't had much use for one lately. And I think it would be wiser if no one knew that the child were here for the time being, Watson. Madame Durand obviously had reason to believe that his safety was threatened. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, he's starting to cry. Yes, we can hear that. Nope. Sing him a lullaby. Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the way. Britain. That doesn't sound like a lullaby to me. Well, you think of one. It's been a long time since anybody sang me a lullaby. <laughs> Of course, our trouble is with far too many suspects. Every country in the world would like to lay its hands on this invention. Or Dr. Durand. Tell me, Lestrade, what is the invention exactly? Well, it's a... It's a sort of a ship that sails underwater. I don't understand it myself, but they say that any country that has it would control the seas in the event of war. I see. Then I presume that Dr. Durand's presence in this country has something to do with his invention. Oh, more than that. Mm -hmm. Yes, his being here is part of a secret naval treaty between France and Britain. Really? Has anybody ever tried to contact this Dr. Durand before, to your knowledge? No. Not that we know of. Mm -hmm. The whole thing's a completely blank wall. When did you return from your errand? It was about an hour and a half ago, sir. Where did madam send you? To the chemist, sir, to pick out some things for the baby. How long were you gone? Half an hour at the most, sir. Had anyone called on Madame Durand prior to your departure to the chemist? Uh, no, sir. We've had no callers at the house at all today, sir. Not even a messenger, perhaps? Ah, yes, sir. There had been a message. Who delivered it? A man. Uniformed? Uh, no, sir. He wore a dark suit and was about um, 40 years of age. Did he wait for a reply to his message? No, sir. He left immediately. He left immediately? Yes, sir. You're quite sure he didn't wait for a reply to his note? No, sir, he didn't. Is anything wrong, sir? Come, Lestrade. Well, Back to Baker Street. We've overlooked the most obvious danger. Danger to whom? Holmes! Holmes! <laughs> Give me 
me a hand. Careful now. Get him on the couch. He's button his head. Yes, I know. I've been a fool. They came in. I, I, I know, Watson. Don't try and talk. I know what happened. I, I, I should have known it was going to happen. But what did happen? Yeah, get his medical case. It's in his room. Holmes, they came in. They struck me on the back of the head. I never... It's all right, Watson. Don't try to talk. Got a look. Here. <laughs> Holmes! It's all right, Watson. It's all right. They got him. Got who? The child. They've taken the child. Don't worry, Watson. We'll get him back. But... But you don't even know where he is. That's true, but I know how I can find him, Watson. I know how I can find him. Turn to the case of the Baker Street nursemaids. The problem was an obvious one. Dr. Durand had been kidnapped, and now his child. There was no question that with his son's and wife's safety threatened, the poor man could be made to divulge the secret that both France and England were trying to guard. Holmes worked with feverish haste for some lead, some clue, that would tell us which one of the many possible foreign powers was responsible for this outrage. His only aid was a scrap of paper, the paper that accompanied the child. Yeah, but how can you be sure, Holmes? Well, Madame Durand received the note from the messenger, and although she followed its instructions, she feared for life of her child, so she brought him here. You can see this piece of paper has been torn from a much larger sheet. And the paper is neither English nor French. And you expect to be able to tell from all this exactly where the paper was made? Certainly. Writing paper is almost as distinctive as writing itself. Its contents, method of manufacture and construction differ enormously from country to country. Now, watch this. That's it. What's it? Yes, what does it mean? There are only three embassies in London who'd use such a paper. It now only remains to investigate each one. Now that's the kind of job I can do. I'll have men deployed around each of the embassies. No one will be allowed to enter or leave until... All right, I'll take it. Excuse me, Dr. Watson, but I must speak to Mr. Holmes immediately, sir. Come in. Is that for me? Uh, yes, sir, it is. It was delivered to the house by the same man as delivered the last message to Madame Durand. He asked me to deliver it to you immediately, sir. Dear Mr. Holmes, your entrance into this situation was, for me, an unexpected development. Now that it has occurred, however, I'm certain that you will, by some method, discover the whereabouts of my guests. Any attempt to free them at this time would be for them disastrous. I offer this alternative. When Dr. Durand has given me the information I ask of him, he and his family will be left unharmed. I will leave England immediately thereafter. Their fate now rests in your hands. Count Tenno. Now we know which one of the three. I can surround the house, close off the entire area. He says he'll kill Dr. Durand if that happens, and I believe he will. But the man must be an absolute fanatic. Oh, yes, he is. What do we do now? We think. You delivered the message to the butler? Yes, Your Excellency. And then, as you instructed, I waited and watched. The butler left the house in a few minutes and proceeded directly to 221B Baker Street. Good. Then Holmes has the message. And I believe he's wise enough to know that I'm not bluffing. They will try nothing for the present, but they will attempt to stop us at the border. Your departure by boat has been arranged, Your Excellency. It will arrive at the appointed place on the coast at 7.30 tomorrow morning. And we will have Dr. Durand's secret long before then. You may go.
Mr. Holmes? A guarantee of safe passage out of England for the safe return of the Durand family. I believe I can guarantee my own safe passage out of England. Every port, every exit will be blocked by the authorities. The authorities would attempt to block every port and exit. We will have to wait to see if they can succeed. The police can always force their way into this house, you know, Count. And I can pull this bell cord. Dr. Durand will be killed immediately and automatically in either case. Yes, but what assurance have we that you won't kill Dr. Durand anyway, in order to stop other countries getting his secret? I'm afraid you will have to wait to see about that too, Dr. Watson. Then I gather that we can't come to an agreement with you, Count. I'm surprised at your naivety, Mr. Holmes. You have nothing to offer me. You should have known that. Lawrence! The gentlemen are leaving now. See them out and bolt the door very carefully behind them. Just by way of inquiry, of course, if there was any possibility of uh, bribing you. Uh, no, no, that's uh, what I thought. That's what I thought, too. Mm. Oh, um... Well, that's the first part of the plan. We're in. Before we do anything else, we put that communication cord out of action. That's going to be difficult. Yes, if it were easy, I wouldn't be in a cold sweat now. Oh, I thought I was the only one.
Not bad, Holmes. Not bad at all. My uh, hand hurts. Oh, well, look. You must keep your wrist stiff and swing from the shoulder. Wrist stiff and swing from the shoulder. Yes. That's right. Look, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Yes. Now, wrist stiff, swing from the shoulder. You know, you're a little light for this kind of work. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. It's just a matter of technique. Mm-hmm. Well, let's go upstairs and get a bit more practice. Yes, yes. Yes. The baby needs something to eat. Go ask Lorenz if it's all right. I'm not supposed to leave my post. Don't leave it. Call him. My government, and I'm certain yours, will be eternally grateful. You're Dr. Watson, are you not? Yes, I am. Gratitude is beyond words at a moment like this. Holmes, Watson. Is everything all right? Yes, everything's absolutely under control. Thanks to you. I didn't do anything. That's what I mean. Well, I... I suppose everybody's quite safe. Yes, thank you, Lestrade. Everyone, including the youngest member of the family. Yes. She's hungry, but she's safe. Oh, well, we can get her something to... Huh? Yes. But, but it's a he. No, her. But a he, her? But the, the, the name is Tony, isn't it? Yes, but she's a she. Hmm. I say, Watson, it seems we were entertaining a young lady. Perfect disguise, though, isn't it? <laughs> 